Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO Terrigan Ding series on the Mr. FPJ DE10 Nano Project, more specifically the work in progress Sega Saturn Core. We're not talking about the Saturn in its entirety today, we're talking about the dual Hitachi SH2 CPUs contained within inside of Sega Saturn and now within inside the core for Mr. FPJ, and that's going to be fundamentally important because the Hitachi SH2 is mostly known for the 32X and the Saturn, but it gets used in a lot of other places. Before we get to fire involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. If you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, got a Patreon link down below as well. But right off the top, the most famous piece of hardware that uses that Hitachi SH2 CPU has got to be the Capcom CPS3, and I know Hotego and his team have talked about doing this in the future, but we really haven't seen any movement on it as far as I have noticed. And that is the thing, a lot of arcade hardware and home console hardware would share at least a partial platform together. The Hitachi SH2 that's running on the Capcom CPS3 is fundamentally no different than what you would see in the Sega Saturn. Chips can be clocked at different clock speeds, but otherwise, if they're using the bone stock SH2, you get the exact same instruction set. Everything the SRG320 is already strung together in FPGA code. So if you were going to develop a Capcom CPS3 core, you'd be able to utilize that code because it is open source to start propping the actual core up. Now that isn't to say that that's going to make everything run. Of course, every single board and platform we're going to be talking about in this video has its own video circuitry as well as audio chips. So there is more than just the CPU, but considering that's one of the two major components on any sort of piece of hardware, having a near complete or at this point in time probably already complete SH2 core for Mr. FPJ is going to be hugely beneficial. Basically what that means is if you were developing the core, some of the work has already been done and that happens a lot across Mr. FPJ and pretty much every different FPGA. FPJ gaming platform because the code is open source. If you need a 68,000 code, you can just go ahead and use some of the previous work to go ahead and get new systems running. So on something like Capcom CPS3, you'd have the ability to take the SH2 code from the Sega Saturn and use that. Now, sometimes CPUs will hook up different pins for different functions, so it isn't just a copy-paste sort of situation. There is some work that goes into it, but we're talking about the large bulk of the work already being done. And considering everyone keeps asking me when Capcom CPS3 will be coming to Mr. FPJ. I figured I'd leave the video off with this. And honestly, it is some very fun hardware that definitely needs an FPGA solution because the actual arcade boards are A, incredibly expensive, and B, incredibly fragile. If you don't get a multi cart and some new RAM sims on there, it's going to be pretty much a mess. Now, moving over to the Sega side of things, they use the Tassi SH2 on Cool Riders. And this is the only arcade game ever to come out on this board outside of a metal pusher, which clearly no one is interested in. If you're not sure what Cool Riders is, it's basically the spiritual successor to Outrun and Outrunners on Sega's other arcade boards. And this game is just straight up a hidden gem. I never hear anyone talk about Cool Riders, and I absolutely love it. And it uses the same Hitachi SH2 that shows up in the 32X and the Sega Saturn. Now, it does have different video circuitry because the entire goal of this board was to be able to push multiple monitors off one PCB versus other Sega arcade games, which have a PCB in every single cabinet. But this game was designed that you'd have one PCB and multiple monitors. So every time you see a Sega arcade racing game and there's two or four units side by side networked up, odds are they have a PCB in every single cab. But the question is, if someone actually wanted to make this core, would the effort be worth it? Is the squeeze worth the juice you're going to get at the end, basically? Because there's only one game that runs in this hardware, and sometimes that is too much effort for that one single payoff. Because there's a lot of other platforms out there, if you get them running, you get 10, 12, 14, 20, 30, even 40 games from that actual PCB. Think about something like the IGS PGM. If that was made tomorrow, you would have basically 50 games to play in FPJ and Mr. FPJ. But if you made a cool writer's core you get one game and even though it's one of my favorites of all time you do still have to admit that's a lot of effort for one title but the best part is this game is incredible and it does emulate well in MAME and it's got an awesome soundtrack so just get a sense of what it sounds like and what could be coming out of your Mr. FPJ in the future but enjoy Thank you. 
Sounds good, but it definitely has a few emulation issues in the sound on MAME. That's not to strike MAME whatsoever. They do an incredible job, but it is something that could be cleaned up in FPGA. Now, moving over to a board that I feel like most people aren't going to know about. This is the Psycho SH2. We're playing the Fallen Angels right here, a fighting game that definitely feels a little bit unfinished, but has a very unique aspect to it. And that is the thing. It isn't just companies like Capcom and Sega that use the Hitachi SH2. Other companies came around and used it as well. It's one of the more popular CPUs for that era in gaming. And something like the Psycho SH2 has so many fun games on it. You've got Strikers 1945 and its sequels. You have the Fallen Angels. The sure there are a lot of puzzle games. But again, if this core was made with the CPU code intact, you would be able to stand up like a dozen games off of that one piece of work. Now again, granted, there is other circuitry and silicon on the board that you'd have to deal with. But the point I'm trying to make here is that once the SH2 code is complete for the Sega Saturn core, it can lend itself to being able to aid a lot more developers trying to get more platforms on Mr. FPGA or other FPGA boards in the future because the Fallen Angels is definitely an absolute vibe here. It's a very strange game but the animations will look to be like third strike quality from a company that didn't really make that many fighting games and that is always fun to see and this is again the type of board that I feel like most people don't really know about. Leave me a comment down below and tell me if you knew what the Psycho SH2 board was. The nice thing is that basically all of the information of these boards has been documented and I'm basically just going over the top level stuff here and what uses the CPU or something like Space Bomber. This game is just 10 out of 10 weird, 10 out of 10 charming, and 10 out of 10 fun. And sure, while it does emulate in MAME, I'd love to have an FPGA core for these boards. It would be so much fun to be able to play these games as they originally intended because Space Bomber is just straight up one of the weirdest arcade shmups ever, but it is a very competent shmup with a catch mechanic, a ton of good bullet patterns, and just overall a very strange and unique presentation style, which I absolutely love. But leave me a comment down below and tell me if you ever played Space Bomber and if you even realize it exists because I feel like this one more so than any other game on this video might be the one that perplexes people wondering what in the hell they're looking at. You even get a load runner arcade game, technically too, because there's variants with different levels, and that would be so much fun to play on Mr. FPJ as well. Sure, it's not the type of stuff like a bullet hell shmup where you're thinking everyone's going to want to play that, but load runner is definitely something that I love playing. Now, I've either already talked about it or we'll talk about it in a future video depending on my scheduling, but obviously we have the Sega Saturn. We could have the Sega STV or Sega Titan video, and this board does have some arcade exclusives that never came over over to Saturn and the STV is a one-to-one -one design with Sega Saturn. The only difference is you get a JAMA Edge and you're loading games off cartridges not CD-ROM drive, so of course there would be some additional code needed to make this all work, but something like Maruguja Guja Chan here, a ramen-based video game, is just so wild, and a lot of the arcade releases will have minor changes compared to their home console counterparts, so sure you can play something like Cotton on Sega Saturn, obviously we all know that, but there are different ways to play Saturn games, and the STV is one of them, and that would be probably the easiest thing to stand up, because the entirety of the Sega Saturn hardware is near to done on Mr. FPJ. So all you would really need to do is pivot over how the games load and dealing with that hardware and then just basically changing around the I.O. for JAMA versus going into something like an actual Sega Saturn or this instance a virtual one in Mr. FPGA. Now one thing I keep hearing people talk about and keep asking me about is the Cave 1000B and 1000D series PCBs. This is not the Hitachi SH2, it is the Hitachi SH3, a chip that did exist and basically no one used for gaming arcade or home console wise outside of Cave. They love the Hitachi chips, but the SH3 has a larger instruction set and these CPUs are running at like 133 MHz a pop. So this would be outside the realm of possibility for Mr. FP but it is a good example because one a chip adds instruction sets what that means is the base instructions from the SH2 can be utilized and you just need to code for the additional instruction sets that the CPU has but don't expect cave on the Mr. FPJ anytime soon outside of the games we already have. But I would say the number one core that people want more so than anything else has got to be the Capcom CPS3, at least on boards that utilize the SH2 CPU. And trust me, I'd absolutely love it as well. Maybe in 2025 we will get some news. But that's what I wanted to talk about today, just how big and fundamental the SH2 code is for Mr. FPGA in continued development. It was a very popular CPU, a lot of boards used it, and now the SRG320 has done the work getting it working on Mr. FPGA. It can definitely benefit other developers in the future if they want to look at it but short of that we are done tell me the one core you want down below more than anyone else and i will see you guys next time for the next mr video
拜。